which offers technical assistance and resources for commercial tobacco prevention and control throughout Indian country. Your presenter today is Andrea Thomas. Uh, Andrea Thomas has been working in tobacco prevention and control, cessation, and healthcare systems change since 2006 for the Southeast Alaska Regional Health Consortium. Uh, Circe serves 18 tribes in Southeast Alaska and is a two-time recipient of the CDC Tribal Support Center grant. Andrea is an active member of a number of regional and statewide teams. Under her leadership, Circe has been has seen a significant drop in tobacco use and more people protected from secondhand smoke. She is currently involved in a statewide effort to increase the number of Alaska Native tribes that adopt tobacco-free policies. Objectives for the, today's webinar are to increase participants' knowledge of tobacco-related disparities among, existing in the Alaska Native community, to increase participants' knowledge of challenges and opportunities for engaging tribal leaders in tobacco prevention work, to increase participants' knowledge of the statewide efforts in Alaska for reducing tobacco disparities among Alaska Native people, to identify tools and approaches used for Alaska Native tribes adopting tobacco-free or smoke-free policies. We, uh, we are now waiting for Andrea to log in. She was having some technical difficulties just a minute ago. Um, there will be question and answer sessions after or towards the end of the webinar uh, that will be handled. Basically, you can either type your question if you don't have audio uh, speakers, microphone capabilities, or you, you can raise your hand and we will then unmute you and you can ask your questions on a case by case basis. Um, okay, we are still waiting on Andrea. She was having a couple of issues with her setup. Uh, also, after the session, there will be this entire webinar will be posted to Keep It Sacred. Um, She will then be able to answer any questions you may have. We're still waiting on Andrea. She's having some technical issues. Hopefully she will be able to log in in just a moment.
we're going to tr try and connect to uh, Dana Deal, who's also one of the co-presenters for today. Um, Dana, can you hear us? This is Dana. Okay, Dana, uh, we can hear you, but we can't see any kind of screen, and we are having some Andrea was having some issues connecting. Um, but okay, you I, were... clicked, I clicked on show my screen, but nothing's coming up. Okay, we can see exactly your screen now. Oh. So, oh, yes, we can see everything on your screen. You're good. So um, do you have... The... I can I can open Andrea's presentation for her if, she, if that would help. Uh, maybe you could go through parts of your presentation. Uh, okay, so let's open your the presentation, uh, and we can start with yours. Um, and we're going to hopefully have date maybe Andrea dial in. Uh, she was having some issues connecting. Okay, so, so this is actually Andrea Thomas's presentation. Um, she just sent it to me, but I can maybe start for her if that would be helpful. That would be great. Okay. So um, my name's Dana Deal, and I work for the Alaska Tobacco Prevention and Control Program in Alaska, um, and I'm the Health Equity Coordinator. So I do a lot of work with Andrea, who works for the Southeast Alaska Regional Health Consortium. Um, Andrea has a tobacco prevention and control grant with the state of Alaska. They actually have a couple grants at what we call SEARCH. Um, and then they also are granted by the CDC Tribal Support Center. So um, they have a number of different funding streams. But I specifically work with Andrea on her project to engage um, our tribal government in tobacco prevention efforts in Alaska. Um, so I just wanted to mention that the picture that she has up here is a no smoking sign that one of our partners at the um, Tanana Chief Conference in Fairbanks adapted to be more culturally appropriate for the communities that they were serving. So they added some very nice um, beaded images to the actual uh, no smoking sign. Um, so in Alaska, according to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, we serve um, around 229 tribes. So we have a really gigantic network of tribes in Alaska. Um, and as you can see by the map, Alaska physically is a huge state and covers over a quarter of the um, United States map. Um, so we have 229 tribes. Um, they're all federally recognized. and of those 229, there's around 80,000 tribal members that we cover. Um, so this is a, a nice map that just kind of show, it shows the reach of uh, the Alaska Native Healthcare System um, and the different languages and tribes that exist in Alaska. Um, I'm on. I'm on Dana. Okay, here's Andrea. I have the telephone, telephone, but I don't see. I, you know, I can't see the. It's not on my, I don't know where you're at. <laughs> so we're on slide three, the Alaska Native Health System map. Okay. And I'll just that transition was, for this you. Is very unfortunate. <laughs> okay. So I can transition the slides as you're going through it because they can actually see my screen. <laughs> okay. So. I guess I, I'm not sure. You know what, Dana, maybe you should go ahead with your discussion. Uh, I was just describing the map that you have on slide three that shows the Alaska Native Healthcare System and the native languages that exist. Um, so I was just going to mention that um, Alaska is not all Eskimos. A lot of people out of state think that um, in Alaska there's just uh, Eskimo people, but actually there are um, three different types of Alaska Native people uh, that fall under uh, American Indians or Alaska or um, so Indians, Aleuts, and then Eskimos. And you could see from this map that um, those different tribes reside in different areas of the state of Alaska. Okay, well, hello everybody. I'm sorry we had lots of complications this morning and it's um, so sorry about that. I don't know exactly what happened, but 
Unfortunately, I don't have those. I can't manipulate the slides, which it would be fun to be able to do. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I think it's important to to know that um, all the different um, all the different tribes, and in in the central area is is Tanana Chiefs Conference is is one of the tribal support centers, and there. Uh, Dana, if you can kind of show where Fairbanks is, and then in the southern part is where Search is, which is a tribal support center. Alaska, again, has 229 tribes, and the tribes can either elect to do their own health care or they can form together in what's called consortium. And so, for example, Tanana Chiefs Conference serves 42 villages and tribes, and Search serves 18 tribes. So you can go to the next slide. Okay. And give you a little bit of history is that in Alaska, in all its vastness, we we do not have any sacred use of tobacco traditionally. So um, typically when it comes to American Indians from the lower 48, there's a real distinction between sacred use and commercial tobacco. But in Alaska, it's all commercial tobacco. So when I'm using this and talking about it in this presentation, that's where that's what I'm talking about. It used to be actually cultivated in the southeast and there was some chewing of it, but then it was used like a plant. And it was pretty much people quit growing it after the European became readily available. They can switch slides. So even though it wasn't used sacredly, we definitely use quite a bit of tobacco in Alaska. As you can see from the slide, the Alaska Native people use, 41% uh, of Alaska Natives use tobacco, and which is twice as much as all adults in Alaska. It's a huge disparity. You can switch the slide. And uh, Dana, if you can point to the upper part. So what we know is that in the northern part, western part, southwestern, have the highest tobacco use in Alaska. And, and in the Matsu area, which is in the center in yellow. And the southern Alaska, where we are, southeast, and in other areas, there's some, there's lower. So one of the issues of why it's so high in certain areas is that it's in the western. So Dana, if you could show that. In the western part, there is a lot of smokeless tobacco. And smokeless tobacco is, there is called ikmik. And ikmik is a Yupik word for thing to put in the mouth. And ikmik is made from taking a fungus from a tree and burning it down to ash and mixing it with leaf tobacco. And when you mix those together, the pH in the ash uh, makes it so the nicotine goes into the bloodstream very quickly. So they, they equate it to freebasing nicotine. It's highly addictive. And kids from ages five to elders use, use ICMIC. And so Part of, one of the reasons why the tobacco use rate is so high is that there's certain areas in Alaska that make it extremely high. So go to the next slide. So this is the interactive part. <clears throat> so this has been a little tricky, and so I actually don't know how this is going to work because it, it was this was supposed to be on my computer, so I have it keyed up. So if everybody can highlight this link, and I don't know, if Seth, if you can somehow show it from your um, your computer. I'm not quite sure how that works. But if everybody can highlight this link and drop it into your internet browser, we're going to, this, this video was produced by the state of Alaska in contract with Northwest Strategies. And it's a really great video to give you a sense of, of Alaska. So, Dana, do you happen to have that up? I'm trying to pull it up. It's um, loading right now. Okay. And Seth, is there any way that you can bring that up? 
I, I would act. I would actually have to take over presentation from Dana, which I can do. Um, I can. This is Dana. I think I can actually um, show it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, also, so, we. Um, uh, Rick Frey did just tell me that IHS apparently blocks YouTube, and a lot of our people are at IHS. So, um, with afterwards, we're going to also post a link to this video on Keep It Sacred. But I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, no, that's great. So once we started, and so unfortunately, um, with IHS, if if you can, um, we get 60 minutes quota time. <laughs> so if you can tune in on that, that would be great. Otherwise, I think you can put your feet up on your chair and sit back and listen a little bit as soon as we get it going. We're just going to play a clip of it. Um, okay, I think I, I can go ahead and play it, Andrea. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it, but I don't know how the audio will work for everyone else. Okay, here here we go. Yes, so far I can't hear anything, Dana. It it's still loading. Okay, well, um, since everything kind of got scrambled up. Why don't we just we'll let it go <laughs> and and I think that if people get a chance to look at the video afterwards, that would be awesome. So basically, the video shows some of the work that's being that has been done historically in Alaska, and so we'll just let's just go to the next slide. Okay. Okay. Good. And. So a lot of the work that's been done has really been the foundation of all the work has been the State of Alaska Tobacco Prevention and Control Program. And they have, they have funded a number of tribes and tribal health consortiums around the state. And we work in partnership with them on a lot of projects. So when it comes to the issue of addressing Alaska Native tobacco use, so we've worked with uh, the State Coalition, which is Alaska Tobacco Control Alliance. We've worked with all the state grantees around the state, of which we are one also, and the leadership to eliminate disparities. So we can go to the next slide. Okay. Okay. So one of so in a team of people working with the leadership to eliminate Alaska disparities. We came up with a strategic plan, and part of it was how to build knowledge among Alaska Native leaders. So like we always do, all of us, we juggle a lot of balls. And so one of the balls that we were juggling is we created this video that was talking, which was having youth interview Alaska Native leaders from around the state. and sharing their sharing their information about their history with tobacco use and also their feelings about secondhand smoke. We also started to work do work on our own which is creating some tools in southeast Alaska that would help build knowledge among Alaska native leaders. So we developed a tool that was a flyer on tobacco use and secondhand smoke and we also created a we also created a resolution in support of smoke free workplaces so we decided to target some large leadership meetings and initially started with the Alaska Native Health Board now this Native Health Board is representatives from all the Native Health Consortiums and tribes in Alaska. And we worked with coalition partners to present to them and they decided to pass this resolution, which was great, but then they changed their mind. <laughs> and then we went back a little bit to the drawing board and what they ended up passing was a resolution in support of tobacco-free tribal organizations which was also an, an important issue, and we were really thrilled with that. The next group that we started to work with was Grand Camp. And Grand Camp is 
uh, is Alaska Native Brotherhood, Alaska Native Sisterhood, which is the oldest civil rights organization. And we made a presentation, and, and so basically delegates from, from all over that are part of Alaska Native Brotherhood and Sisterhood that get, they get together mostly in Southeast Alaska. And then at that time, they passed a resolution in support of statewide smoke-free workplaces. So you can see this is just building one after another of these large gatherings. So last but not least, and you can change the slide here, last but not least was Alaska Federation of Natives. This is an annual gathering that brings all of the delegates from all the tribes in Alaska, all 229 tribes, and they gather together and they look at legislative priorities and they pass a variety of resolutions from health to economic. And so those of you who have worked with tribal meetings and, and procedures know that it's not necessarily that straightforward. <laughs> it's hard to know what the first step is and the second step and third step. And so we went down that meandering path and we ended up making 900 copies of the resolution and the flyer, educational flyer, and put it on all the delegates' chairs. We got a champion to bring it forward. We had somebody to second it. And as part of that video that we're not able to watch, but please do watch it at your home or your office is the section in the video that actually is direct footage from the AFN convention, in which case they passed it overwhelmingly um, to support a statewide smoke-free workplace. You can go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So we moving forward with this momentum and with this really huge stamp of approval, we gathered together and tried to figure out a strategy to keep the momentum building with Alaska tribes. So we held a teleconference where all state grantees were invited. So you can see on this map here, there's a lot of grantees, both from tobacco prevention and control, cessation, and even school grantees that are throughout the state. And so one of the first things that we did is we formulated a letter, and this letter was sent out by regional grantees and ourselves out to every single tribe in Alaska. From there, we really started to develop tools. Because we know when people have the tools, it empowers them to, uh, to get the work done, basically. It allows them and it gives them the tools to, to have a focused effort to get, get the work done. So um, we created, you can go to the next slide. We created, again, here's the flyer that we produced. And in collaboration with some the state grantee, state um, contractors, uh, sample resolutions were developed from tobacco-free workplace to smoke-free workplace. We collectively, as a whole statewide team, came up with tips for working with local tribes, and that was an internal document. We came up with an Im implementation toolkit, so if tribes do pass a resolution, smoke-free or tobacco-free, we have a sort of kit to help them out. So Dana, you can... Um, go to the next slide, and the next slide shows a sample of the resolution that we developed, and also the next slide, which shows the implementation packet. Mm -hmm. So grantees from all of the states started working on this project. So you can go to the next slide, and you'll see that since AFN passed, and with that momentum and the focused effort, 13 tribes passed either smoke-free or tobacco-free resolutions, which is great. So, and each one of these has a story in and of itself. Some happened really quickly and some took a lot of work. So go to the next slide. So, so far we have 49 known 
tribes that have some sort of policies for tobacco or smoke free, which is really great. Of course, that represents about 21% of all the tribes in Alaska. So we still have a long way to go. And of course, these are what we know of because when you saw the original maps from Alaska and saw how huge it is, you know, Alaska is so vast and communities are so isolated that it's tricky to get <laughs> out to every single village and have connections in every single village. So we still have a ways to go. And go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So this year we really wanted to get the Alaska Federation of Natives and Alaska Native Health Board an update from the resolutions from last year. So we created a document and presented it and gave it out at the AFN, Alaska Federation of Natives annual gathering in October. And then we also, which is happening right now, which is the next slide, as a follow-up to the Alaska Native Health Board resolution that was in support of tobacco-free tribal health organizations, we created this document with, along with partners. So one of these tribal health consortiums that passed a tobacco-free uh, campus policy was Tanana Chiefs Conference, and you can go to the next slide. So some of you may be able to relate to some of the greatest barriers that we face in moving policies forward actually are more internal. In other words, sometimes we face most of the barriers in our own department. Could be from supervisors, could be from our, the, the leaders in our organization. This was the case for Tana Chiefs Conference. They have been trying for years to bring forward smoke -free, a smoke-free workplace policy. But with the momentum, and again, you know, leaders of consortiums and tribal health facilities and department heads often have a lot of maybe different priorities. Some people could be tobacco users. But mostly, they're not feeling the kind of pressure that it takes to be able to make some sort of change. So what the, my colleagues from Tanana Chiefs Conference did is they worked with the coalition members, taking the information about the Alaska Federation um, resolution to them, and the draft, the, the draft resolutions that tribes could pass and presented it to coalition members. So one of the coalition members took this back to their village, the village of Koyakuk, and they passed the resolution. They took it to their sub-region group, which also passed it, and then they brought it to the annual convention where all the 42 villages that are represented, by, re, represented with Tanana Chiefs Conference came together. My colleagues, made a presentation, and as people were walking in the door, 120 stickers were given out. And during the presentation, they asked all the people with the stickers to stand up and share that this is the number of people that every year die in Alaska from exposure to secondhand smoke. The, the coalition member that brought this forward, the resolution, the tribe that brought this forward, through all the steps, plus this powerful presentation, really moved the delegates and they passed this a resolution in support of tobacco-free workplaces. This provided the support and approval for leaders in Tanana Chief Conference to pass a tobacco-free workplace policy. This is what it takes. It takes a focused effort with many partners to get the work done. So going to the, the next slide, is there's the passage with Shauna and uh, Melanie working on that. And in Southeast, we have been working in tobacco prevention and control for, for over 10 years. And we've been blessed with funding from the CDC Tribal Support Center and money from the state of Alaska. 
and we have been working on with community coalitions all the CDC best strategies is exactly what we've been working on so working with community coalitions to work together to pass smoke-free ordinances and tobacco taxes media campaigns that are regional and sometimes targeting specific communities that educate about secondhand smoke and encouraging people to quit tobacco search Southeast Alaska Regional Health Consortium, which is where I work, also provide tobacco cessation services to tribal members. We work with tribes, tribal leaders on smoke-free policies. We've worked in housing with businesses to go voluntarily smoke-free and taking our own campus and other campuses smoke-free. And what we found from all this work is the next slide, is that we have been collecting information since 2005 by doing our own behavioral risk factor surveillance survey in our own region, specifically targeting Alaska Native people. And what we found comparing our 2005 and 2011 data is that there was a significant decrease in the number of Alaska Native American Indian smoking, currently smoking from 2005 to 2011. And this is really a direct result of all the work that's been done and using the CDC proven strategies. We know what works. It just takes focused effort and a comprehensive approach to make all of this work out and move people towards protecting people from secondhand smoke. And so our, the last slide is one of the Southeast traditional tribal values is be strong in mind, body, and spirit. And that's what we need to keep going here in Southeast Alaska. And I'm sure all the rest of the United States could use this strategy also in moving um, tobacco policy forward. And um, I'm really sorry that everything didn't start out the way it needed to start out, uh, but I would ha be happy to answer any questions that you have. So there are a couple of ways that a person can ask a question. There's the raise hand button, or uh, if you can, don't have, and we will unmute you, or you can just type in your question, uh, and we can either unmute you or I can read it if you don't have a microphone available. Yeah, so Seth, if you could read them because I, I don't have the screen at all. That's fine. I'll, I'll be happy to read them. Okay. Andrea, this is Dana, and I, I just wanted to thank you for um, hanging in there and this wonderful presentation, but I also wanted to add that um, we've had a lot of work in the past around um, trying to engage tribes in Alaska in tobacco prevention efforts, but over the last um, year or so since the Alaska Federation of Natives passed that resolution in support of statewide smoke-free workplaces, I think what's made all of the work that we've been doing so successful is that we've just had a really strong collaboration across um, all entities that work with our last Native tribes. So, I mean, we've developed really strong relationships with you guys at the Southeast Alaska Regional Health Consortium. Um, and then we also work very closely with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. So that's the biggest um, Native health agency in Alaska. Um, and then with the Alaska Native Health Board as well. And then we have such a large network of grantees that these tobacco prevention and control grantees are able to reach kind of those grassroots people that work directly with tribes. So I think the, the success, um, there's a lot of contributor, contrib contributing factors to how we've been successful, but one of the main ones is that we've collaborated so strongly with all of these different agencies that serve Alaska Native people that um, we're, we're now seeing the momentum build. Thanks, Dana. Uh, we have a hand raised from Debbie. We also have a number of questions, uh, which we'll get to in just a second, but I'm going to unmute Debbie Shandy just for so she can ask her question. Hi, Debbie. 
Okay, Debbie, you're on. Debbie? Um, maybe we lost Debbie. Um, but we'll come back to her. Um, we do have a question from Kelly uh, Millam, who asks, are tribes sovereign in the same way they are in the lower 48? Yes, they are sovereign, but it is, yes, they are sovereign. But the difference, there's definitely some differences in that. And this is, it's pretty complicated. Um, we, a lot of tribes don't have land like um, tribes in the lower 48 do. We, there's, there's only one reservation in Alaska, it's Metlakatla. And so there's no reservations in Alaska. And so tribe, there's tribal corporations and tribal corporations own land, but tribes actually don't own very much land. And so I'm saying that because a lot of the tribal sovereignty deals with what is done on tribal land. <clears throat> and um, so, for example, in Alaska, if a resolution is, if a community ordinance is passed, then if tribes have businesses that are not on, that are not on tribal land, they have to follow the policy. Um, and but and then tribe but and then tribes have to pass their own policies, tribal policies for their particular property. I don't know if that answers your question, Dana. Did you want to add anything? I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, yeah, tribes have a government to government relationship with their states, um, and they are able to self govern. But like you said, it depends on the lands that they own. So. Um, what we are doing is working with tribes to pass tobacco-free or smoke-free workplace resolutions. So what that means is that um, if we pass this resolution, all of the workplace property would be covered by the policy. So thanks for the question. It is, it is, there are some tricky differences. We have next another question. Uh, we have a question from Chantel. I'm going to unmute her just a second. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Chantel. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. I can. Okay, great. I was just wondering about how much funding have you all received to fund your tobacco prevention and control efforts? Okay, well, I have um, a couple, I have three grants right now in Southeast um, with the consortium that I work for. So I have a tribal support center grant that's about 250000 mm -hmm. And then I have two state grants of which that's probably another uh, more, a little bit more than 200000 Right. So okay. we're probably, we're probably the only ones in our, in our state that actually have those three, all three all three grants. Okay. Okay, great. So, but in our in our state, there's a there's a number of tribes and tribal health consortiums that have a state grant for tobacco prevention and control. And honestly, I have to look and I could pull this out and see exactly. Dana probably knows exactly, but I have to remember my budget. Um, but it's more than a hundred thousand. Okay. It's more than a hundred thousand. It's like a hundred, and so, um, so individual tribes and tribal health consortiums have that amount of money to work specifically in their area, which is really fantastic. I mean, the work that we do couldn't be done without the funding from the state um, for for different tribes and tribal health consortiums and other agencies that are doing work. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, or? Yes, yes, it does. Yes, and I was just wondering how much, um, you know, how much funding did you have to work with to to be effective throughout your tribe? Well, you know what, we did a lot of things just with a state grant, with a right. hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. There's a lot of work that can be done um, with a focused, strategic effort. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that can be done that aren't so expensive. You know, you can make flyers and post them, and 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 there's a lot, and you can do presentations and talk one on one with people to building uh, for building relationships for policy work. So, um, money is needed for sure, but a lot can be done with not much money. <laughs> right. Right. I understand. Okay, well, great. Thanks. It looks like you guys are being very effective and just best wishes to you all in your future endeavors. Thanks a lot. Uh, Char Day has a question. I'm going to unmute her just a second. Go ahead. Hi, Char. Hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's so good to hear your voice and great presentation. Thank you so much. This is really really been helpful to hear what um, you know what you all have been able to accomplish in a period of time especially to see that the rate of tobacco use come down so you know th- thank you for all your great work that you do there um, th- there's a lot of what you guys have been able to accomplish in Alaska that I think might be transferable to other nations um, one thing that we're working on is um, taking your idea of that resolution and putting mm-hmm. it into a draft model resolution that maybe other tribes could could um, could use for their smoke-free workplaces to get tribal support from communities for smoke-free workplaces. And uh, mm-hmm. we have a couple of people, in, including maybe some folks that are on this this call and the National Native Network, reviewing that draft model resolution, and we're almost done. And um, hopefully, when we're able to finish it. We'll be able to post it. I, I hope on on keepsacred.com and and maybe get it sent out through others. Thank you so much for that, that great idea, and um, hopefully other folks can use that too. You're welcome, and we're, we'll be happy to share the the resolutions and you know a copy of our flyer and the implementation packet. We can send it to um, Keep It Sacred and um, mm-hmm. And can provide those tools as models, you know, because I know that every place is different, and how the wording needs to change for each tribe. You know, there's this, there's a lot of nuances, and and the best way to say things. So, you know, I'd be happy to send it in Word so people can just wordsmith it and and um, change it the way they would like it. Um, the more people, the more tribes that pass smoke-free resolutions and tobacco-free resolutions is good for all of us. So I'm happy to share. That. We're we're all happy to share that those tools. Andrea, I wonder if you could tell us, uh, uh, you know, how you were able to get maybe the first one passed. Sometimes that's the biggest hurdle. Once you get one signed, then others are able to sign on after that. <clears throat> Well, um, you know, we started with larger group, larger known groups like Alaska Native Health Board. Is that what you're talking about, or are you talking about the first tribe? Um, either way, whatever you think was, was beneficial in the beginning for signing the resolutions. <clears throat> well, our approach was starting with these larger groups that had... Um, Let's see the word I'm looking for. They had authority, and that would be used. To, would be great to say, look, these people passed this resolution. This is something this large group is behind, and so I think that actually has been a great approach as leverage and pressure for smaller tribes, actually, because the smaller tribes are part of those bigger groups. And it's sort of like falling in line with what collective pe- people believe in. Mm-hmm. Andrea, this is Dana, and I was just going to mention that. Um, so, when the Alaska Federation of Natives passed their resolution in support of statewide smoke-free workplaces, after that, the letter that we wrote, we developed was a thank you letter to all of the tribes in Alaska because all the tribes send at least one delegate to the Alaska Federation of Natives Convention. So we were sending them a letter saying, thanks for supporting this resolution that you passed. 
Um, mm -hmm. Here's the reason that we presented it, and you know what? Here's why it's important to address tobacco within your own workplace setting. So I think that was also a way to engage them. That first letter that we sent out. Mm -hmm. And I think also with that, we did a lot of media. There's a lot of media around the passage of the AFN, Alaska Federation of Natives resolution, and that got a lot of coverage. And so followed up with that letter, then we were sending letters um, with the information about the smoke-free policy. I mean, part of it is making it easy for people, saying, wow, okay, here's the information, here's the draft resolution. It makes it really easy. <laughs> it makes it easier to pass when you have these things readily available and they're almost pre-done for you. Great suggestions. Thanks a bunch. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Uh, there are indeed other questions. Uh, okay. I'm going to, just a second, I'm going to unmute Kim Alford, who has a question. Hi, Kim. Hold on just a second. Okay, Kim, you're, we can hear you. You can? Hi, Kim. Yes. Hi, Kim. Hi. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to mention, well, first of all, thank you so much, um, Andrea and Dan both for presenting for the National Native Network. And um, I'd like to just say that we'd be happy to post um, any of your material as resources for everyone else, if you're willing, um, including your strategic plan. I think it would be very helpful for others to see, you know, a broader scope of what you're doing. And so if you're willing to share any of those materials, we'll be happy to post them. Okay. Sure, we can send those on. No Thank you. We have a question from Tara Schmidt. I'm going to try and unmute Tara. Um, just a second. Uh, go ahead, Hi, Tara. Tara. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. OK. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, is Norton Sound Health Corporation included uh, in there as a tribal health organization? I wasn't sure what that would fall under. Yes, no. Norton Sound, yes, that's that's in Nome, and they mm -hmm. are a tribal health consortium, right? So they represent a number of tribes, and I don't know how many, but a number of them because it's a big region, and so they are a tribal health yeah. consortium. Mm -hmm. There's about 14 yeah. villages in the surrounding area that you have to fly to, so. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Are there other questions? Oh, sorry. There have been some concerns about people that work in government offices offices being able to uh, view the video. Uh, we will also post it to keep it sacred. Um, and if you want, you can send us emails, and we will perhaps distribute the video via email to a couple of people that have expressed interest but can access Facebook, can access YouTube, um, can access certain things. Um, you can send it home, you guys. And watch it at home. I know yeah. you should be be able to watch it at work, but <laughs> yeah. And we actually also have those on the our state coalition's website, so we can send that link. So you maybe you'll be able to get on that that site. I'm not sure. If they hosted the video through their own internal site, maybe. Um, sometimes people block any kind of, of technical URL for video links, mm -hmm. cer certain mm -hmm. government agencies, but some of them do allow things other than YouTube or Facebook or social networks. Mm -hmm. um, there will be a link, an email sent out to all the participants today, and it will contain as many links as we can possibly find to the video. So hopefully people will be able to see it at their office. And if not, like you said, it will be available at home. 
Okay, so sorry I could not play it, and we just got all jumbled over here. <laughs> sorry about that. It would have been great to show. Are there other questions or comments? Okay, then on behalf of the National Native Network, I would like to thank Andrea and Dana today for their help in presenting this webinar. Um, there will be a short evaluation sent out probably tomorrow uh, by way of SurveyMonkey. Please do let us know how we can improve our efforts. Um, and we would like to also thank you for attending this web National Native Network Technical Assistance Webinar. If you would like to see any of the other topics offered, uh, or if you have a topic you'd like to talk about yourself and think that other people would be interested in, please do contact us at keepitsacred.org. And please also look for this post evaluation, which will come within the next few days. Your input is important and appreciated. And we'd like to thank you again.